Hello, I'm Brad Stubbe, Sheriff of Manatee County, and welcome to Sheriff's Patrol. And I'm Dave Bristow. Coming up on Sheriff's Patrol, we'll look back at some of the big cases of 2011 and what we might look forward to in 2012. But first on Sheriff's Patrol, we recently honored our top employees at the MSO Annual Awards Banquet. We had another great turnout for the event, which was held at the Renaissance on 9th. The first presentation is the Bell's Humanitarian Award. It's now my pleasure to uh, introduce the Bell's Humanitarian Award for this year. Since 2006, Dan Whitten has devoted both his time and energy to benefit the student athletes of the Palmetto High School football program. His work has covered all aspects of the program, including uniform upkeep, facilities and field maintenance, coaching and personal contributions, ensuring the students have what's needed to play. He makes himself available to the students without hesitation and provides ongoing support and encouragement. On one particular occasion, he even opened his own home to a student in need and has since assumed full responsibility for this student who now lives with him and his wife, Shelley. In a time where resources are stretched so very thin, he is a wonderful asset to the school and the athletic program, but of more value is the admiration and respect he has gained from the many students whose lives he has touched. For his contributions that benefit the lives of young people in our community, Dan Whitten is recognized as Bell's Humanitarian for 2011. See, this is my son, Dequel Randall. He's our... He's our middle linebacker right now, and um, already got a verbal commitment to Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, this is presented to you for your warmth, compassion, and willingness to take the extra step for your fellow man and the understanding the needs of others. And go Tigers! Go Tigers. <laughs> Well, Dan Whidden is uh, one of our longtime employees who obviously is uh, spending a lot of time in our community, and uh, uh, this goes to a great guy. Yeah, he did a great job with Palmetto, and Palmetto had a great year, and we congratulate Dan Whidden. Next up is the Robert Moulter Volunteer Award. Through the generosity of the Robert Moulter Memorial Award, we have been fortunate to be able to recognize a volunteer who goes above and beyond expectation in their commitment to their community, service, or organization, and present them with a $1,000 savings bond. We are pleased to have Robert Moulter's widow, Faith Moulter, up here, and his son, Dan Moulter, to present this award along with Sheriff's duty. With so many volunteers working in our organization, each year we request our employees to submit the names of volunteers who work with them and who they believe best meet the criteria for this award. This year, we received five nominations. These nominations were for Wayne Cano, Steve Winfield, Deputy Jane Casey, Deputy Deborah Freer, and Deputy Thomas DeRuin. It's always a difficult decision to make when reading about the commitment these ind individuals make to our community. However, since we can only select one of these five nominees, the award recipient is a deputy sheriff who has worked for the reserve unit since December 2008. Congratulations, Deputy Tom DeRuin. <laughs> deputy DeRuin has volunteered 3,654 hours while maintaining full-time employment with the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. He started working as an air traffic controller at the airport after the FAA transferred him from Miami in 2008. In November of 2009, he completed the MSO patrol field training and evaluation program and started volunteering in addition to his full-time job. His volunteer assignments include patrol, traffic, and aviation observer. In the course of his service, he has worked 275 patrol shifts, made 166 arrests, issued 628 traffic citations, summons, and warning, and responded to 2,257 calls for service and 719 assists. For his commendable service to the Manatee County Sheriff's Office, 
the reserve unit, and the citizens of Manatee County, he is named the 2011 Robert Moulter Memorial Volunteer of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, with my full-time job at the airport, I work four days a week with them, 10-hour shifts, so that gives me three days off. So with those three days, I try to manage my time uh, between my personal life, coming out here, helping the community, and just taking care of the stuff that I have to do, but I do enjoy this a lot, so I do you know, devote as much time as I can to it. Well, not too long ago, I had an opportunity to uh, speak with Thomas. And the hours that he puts forth for us is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, he seems like a great guy and very dedicated to his regular job and then his second job at the sheriff's office. Yes. Now it's time for our employee and deputy of the year. These recipients are chosen from 12 employees and deputies of the month. Now I'm going to announce the employee of the year. Uh, when I call you, just come on down and then I'll, I'll read the synopsis. So 2011 Employee of the Year goes to Christian Rojas. Congratulations. <laughs> On November 14th of 2011, Mr. Rojas and another fingerprint examiner responded to the medical examiner's office to fingerprint in a deceased body that was found floating two days before and was in a state of decomposition. Mr. Rojos took the first layer of skin from the fingers and attached it to his own. He then rolled it with ink and transferred it to a print card. He first checked the prints through the local and state AFIS database systems with negative results. The prints were then re-encoded and sent to ICE and the FBI systems with a possible match from both agencies soon after. After comparison and verification, identification was made through the FBI. For his diligent efforts to this sensitive field of work, he is recognized as the 2011 Employee of the Year. Congratulations. We just read it on the books, but actually it comes to practice on, in, in the office where when I started working in the fingerprint unit, that's where they teach us how to cut up the skin in certain cases like that when, they, when the skin is already falling off. Sheriff, excellent work by Christian. It, it was, and uh, Dan Doyle with uh, Bell said it. Uh, he didn't really want to shake his hand after he learned what he had done, and it was kind of funny. But uh, uh, th this is an example of our true CSI. No doubt about it. Not what you see on TV, what we do at the sheriff's office every day. That's true. Now, our final presentation is the big one, our Deputy of the Year. Okay, and this year's Deputy of the Year goes to Detective Sam Levita. Congratulations. <laughs> Detective Levita and his family met with another MSO employee and his family at a friend's home on October 31st, 2011. After trick-or-treating in the neighborhood, the kids were in the bedroom playing where there was a fog machine and a strobe light. Detective Levita went into the bedroom to check on the children and found his co-worker's teenage boy on the floor non-responsive and appearing to be locked in a seizure. He found a piece of candy lodged in his throat and removed it to prevent him from further choking, then laid him down and calmed him until the father was summoned. The boy was transported to the hospital by MS, and it was later determined that he had suffered a seizure from a concussion that he received during a wrestling practice earlier in the day that was triggered by a strobe light. Had Detective Levita not found the child and rendered aid when he did, there could have been a tragic outcome. For his quick actions, he is recognized as the 2011 Deputy of the Year. Congratulations, Sam. Something I don't ever want to go through again. And, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, maybe it was because it wasn't, you know, I knew the boy since he's little, but I don't know if I could have done it with my son, but I just knew that well, somebody had to act. Sorry, I just, it's, it's kind of... It gets to me every time I think about it, so I don't like to go back to it, but, but I'm just glad I was there, and thank God that you know, he, everything worked out for the best. And Sam LaVita, uh, at the time when I read this award, I was unaware that uh, the person that he actually saved was the uh, son of one of our deputies, yeah, me too. so it makes yeah. it just that much more special for us.
Yeah, uh, Lieutenant Cunningham will be forever grateful, obviously. And uh, Sam's a great guy, very well deserving of this. All right, we'll be back with more Sheriff's Patrol right after this. So, you want to be a part of a criminal street gang? You just might want to think about it. Joining a street gang is wrong. It could be dead wrong. I don't know. My mom said I should be home at midnight. Don't worry. I'll make sure I get you home. Happy anniversary. Oh my God, I'm just gonna take her home, right? Take her home? She's not breathing! This is a crime prevention alert. Home burglaries can be prevented by following these simple tips. Always lock your windows and doors. Keep areas around your property well lit. If you see unusual or suspicious activity, report it. And never open a door to someone you don't know. For more information, contact our crime prevention section or visit us online at manateesheriff.com. Welcome back to our show, along with Sheriff Brad Stubbe, I'm Dave Bristow. In news from the Sheriff's Office, catching up with recent Deputies of the Month, we recognize Deputy Brian Kelly and Sergeant Dale Berg for their quick action in an attempted suicide at the jail. And congratulations to Linnell Hauser for being named Employee of the Month for her work in tracking down a soldier who had some property stolen a few years ago. The property was located, and because of Linnell, was returned to its rightful owner. In promotions, the following have earned first class deputy, Jeremy Bertolino, Katie Gilbert, Paul Bolso, Maria Gonzalez Gillum, Gerald Davis, Nicholas Pruitt, and Jason Vitteret. We have several employees who have reached 20 years of service, Sidney Edigu, Deputy Jeremy Geiger, Detective Kamiko Carter, Sergeants Rodney Taylor and Robert Tucker, Lieutenant Bill Vidioli, and finally, Major Dennis Doomer. Hitting the 25-year mark are Deborah Dickerman and Sharla Everly, and congratulations to Detective Debbie Kirkland on her 30-year anniversary at the Sheriff's Office. Three retirements to pass along, Detective James Choate, Deputy David Livingston, and Susan Cormican. Sheriff, each year MSO hosts the Flight to the North Pole, an event for terminally ill children and their families. Well over 100 people attended the 27th annual Flight to the North Pole, which was held at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport Fire Department. The children were treated to gifts, lunch, and a visit from Santa. Well, there's more and more work that goes into this, but uh, certainly it is worthwhile because a lot of these kids, uh, we may not see them next year. And I think it's important to let everyone know how this started. You know, it started way back when Eastern Airlines was around. That's right, uh, almost 20 years ago. And uh, the flight attendants uh, began this uh, initiative and uh, eventually it was taken over by the fire department there at the uh, Braden and Sarasota International Airport and somehow we got involved and uh, it's been a good thing every year. All right, we're gonna be back with more Sheriff's Patrol right after this. And again in 2011, deputies went after the people dealing prescription drugs. 
and we set up our prescription drug drop box to make it easier to get rid of the unneeded pills. It ain't worth it. Either you're gonna be in jail, prison, or you're gonna get shot up, probably get hit, end up being dead. It ain't worth doing the game, trust me. I know, look at me. Being in jail, going to prison, it ain't worth it. Don't join. Is gang life what you want? What if I stay off drugs? Can I stay out of trouble? Maybe you become my mentor. And maybe I get accepted into college. And maybe you help send me to college. And then maybe I get a degree. Then maybe I'll discover a new galaxy. Then maybe I win the Nobel Prize. Who will I thank first? Take Stock in Children provides deserving kids in your community with scholarships and mentors. Call to sponsor a child. Thank you. Emergencies happen within seconds. Often the outcome is tragic and notification can take hours. That's exactly what happened when my daughter Tiffany died in an accident. It was over six hours before we received the horrible news. That's time we'll never get back. Register your contact information today at toinformfamiliesfirst.org. It's a secure site for law enforcement use. When emergencies happen, family and loved ones need to know. Car crashes occur every 12 seconds. Nine teens are killed each day, 3,500 each year. The nation's number one teenage killer is car crashes. Teen Driver Challenge teaches young drivers about safety techniques, vehicle dynamics, and how to avoid accidents. Register for the next Teen Driver Challenge by visiting our website, manateesheriff.com. Take the challenge and learn to drive like your life depends on it. Welcome back everyone to Sheriff's Patrol. Well, 2011 certainly was a busy year at the Sheriff's Office. We join Randy Warren for a look back at some of last year's major crime stories. Dave, like every year, deputies see a variety of cases, some making headlines, others not so much. In this look back at last year, we see that our focus was on priorities, targeting the biggest problem areas. Burglaries. Taking me to jail. Armed robberies. Many of which were solved with video evidence. There's a strong likelihood we know who you are, we're going to be able to find you, and we're going to be able to get you arrested for the crime you committed just because of you forgot that there's video cameras somewhere. To help catch these suspects. Within five seconds, this individual comes up and tries the front door. We introduced Can You ID Me? We have four different topics at this time. We have open warrants, persons of interest, um, stolen property, and missing persons. All we do are pay attention to the violent crimes. I didn't see nothing, man. We took you for a ride with our violent crimes task force. Nothing from that Groover's Carl earlier? No. As of late, our main objective has been some of these shootings that have been occurring. We will do the research as far as locations, addresses, vehicles assigned to these people. We'll, we'll set up surveillance on them. We're 10, 12 with our party. You're right, you're right. And again, in 2011, deputies went after the people dealing prescription drugs. And we set up our prescription drug drop box to make it easier to get rid of the unneeded pills. We uncovered more leads in the Sabine Musil Bueller case. Based on the evidence that we do have in this case already and what's been found out here previously, you know, you just got to come up with some hypothesis and, you know, an area where we, you know, common sense might tell you that she may have been put um, by the suspect. And at that point, you know, we just go through the different processes here of clearing it, clearing the CO, CO so that we can try to see if we can find something. Her whereabouts is still a mystery. Well, let me tell you a little bit about us and what we do. Detectives working undercover 
exposed the problem of prostitution on Craigslist. Sheriff's office, let me see your hands. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. It's always been a problem. Law enforcement has always addressed it. We're going to evolve just as they evolve. We're not necessarily only on the streets anymore. Now we're you know, moving it into internet, uh, emailing back and forth, and we're going to take it whichever direction we need to to make sure we can com combat the problem. The bomb squad rolled out the robot. Basically, the bomb squad was started in 1984, one bomb tech, and then from there it ventured out where now we have uh, six, six bomb techs. And demonstrated how these specially trained deputies are keeping us safe. Basically, it was responsible for rendering safe, uh, first of all, finding out if it is an explosive device for if it's a, uh, whether it's a bottle acid bomb some kids left behind or it's a military ordinance that somebody has passed away and is left with a family to find or pipe bombs or anything else. And then of course we also respond to things or train to respond to things we hope never happen which would be suicide bombers and vehicle bombs and so forth. I got $583. Some say the bad economy has led to more gold scams. Watches, rings, necklaces. We arrested some impact burglars where uh, they had obviously broke into houses and vehicles, stolen gold and jewelry, and brought them here and received uh, money for them. And we showed you a side of law enforcement many people never see. We respond to a lot of loose livestock. The Sheriff's Rural Cops Unit covers hundreds of square miles of East County, never knowing what they'll encounter next. We try to build relationships and work closely with uh, ranchers, farmers, cattle owners, citrus owners, um, and we deal with any of the agricultural uh, crimes that come up. As you see, deputies worked hard at developing relationships. Community policing is again a priority this year. And we can always use your help. When you see crime, don't be afraid to report it. Sheriff? Well, you know, the bottom line for us, uh, Dave and Randy, is the fact that uh, we need citizen involvement. And uh, who better knows who lives in your neighborhood but you? So if you see something suspicious, pick up the telephone and call and give us the opportunity to come out and check into it. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, I think that we've had more of that in the last year than, most definitely. than we've ever had. Bo most definitely. But we've been singing those praises, right. too, for the right. last couple of years. So, yeah, we need, we need the people to, to, to contact us. And then, of course, in uh, 2012, what are we looking for? Specifically that, because it's going to be tough for us this year uh, to keep to keep crime down. I think we're going to break even, maybe be up uh, 1% uh, for 2011, but uh, we'll have those figures in soon. Okay. The 20th annual Brad Price Memorial Powell Bowl was recently played with Manatee County downing Sarasota County to deadlock the series at 10. Looks like Manatee's in cover, cover they're in cover one. It's a man-free uh, we're, we're manned up outside, and the free safety is just playing football. A little fade route here. There's a beautiful catch. And he got Moss. A great catch. And the uh, end zone touchdown. That uh, catch by number 88, Porter. Fred Porter. And that's the first time tonight Sarasota has been able to break it and get into the end zone. And uh, just an absolute fabulous jump and catch for Porter. You know, Manatee's here inside the 10-yard line, so turnovers. <laughs> will plague Sarasota. That's on the seems, seems to plug him again. They got a lead play here and a touchdown. Looks like he can get in there and he that's got the, in. Yeah, that's on the eight yard line and uh, yeah. the guy taking it in there, Leon Allen, number just, seven. Just a lead play. So, um, you know, you're, if you got to go nine yards, that's pretty easy. We want to take time to thank our title sponsor for the game, Ben Price, on behalf of the Brad Price Foundation. The Price family has been extremely generous and we are very much appreciative of everything they have done for the Police Athletic League. And speaking of football, you may have seen our texting and driving PSA featuring the Manatee High School football team and cheerleaders. Well, that must have been some good karma for the Hurricanes as they went on to capture the state championship. Sheriff, congratulations to Joe Canan, his coaches, and all the players at Manatee High School. And I know you being a graduate of Manatee, you couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier uh, for uh, all of Manatee High School and uh, what they were able to accomplish this year. Uh, the fifth uh, state championship, uh, what, 
Yeah. It's just unbelievable. I, I wish Palmetto would have been there as well, but they had a great season too. Yes, they did. Congratulations to both Palmetto and Manatee. And finally, don't forget, for information on the Manatee County Sheriff's Office, you can go to manateesheriff.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For Sheriff Brad Stubbe, I'm Dave Bristow. Until the next time, so long, everyone.